Hi guys, I'm Vaughn, aka Undergirl, and I'm here with a very special episode of Feelings with the Geekieri. We're joined by Mickey Fisher, the man who created a show that managed to combine my three biggest fears, pregnancy, artificial intelligence, and creepy children. I'm talking about X Stance, starring the wonderful Halle Berry. Let's hear what Mickey has to say about season two. Hi, my name is Mickey Fisher, and I am the creator of Extant, uh, and uh, also one of the uh, executive producers and a writer on the show. Wow, awesome. That's good. Extant is uh, currently shooting its second season. That's correct? But, yeah, we're, we're shooting our second season. We're just about to wrap the third episode. So, uh, so yeah, the, the, the train is on the tracks and moving at full speed by this point. First question is, uh, you must... Already have already have an idea about what kind of character Molly was going to be when you came up with the story for Extant. Um, having Halle Berry play her on screen, what kind of complexity did she bring to the role of Molly? Uh, you know, she brought a lot of complexity uh, to the role, and she, and she brought right away. She brought a lot of the things that that we were really everything that we were hoping for um, with the character. And I, when I wrote her, I, I you know created the. Uh, her is like this, the best of us in a sense, you know, like the strongest and the smartest of us. You know, astronauts, they're extraordinary individuals. And you know, a lot of times um, you know, story series they're about, you know, ordinary individuals in an extraordinary situation. Well, what happens if you take an extraordinary individual and you put them in this sort of impossible situation with this alien pregnancy and all this kind of stuff? So, um, so I knew that, you know, like it had to be somebody who had like a fierce intelligence but also had this this kind of uh, underlying warmth to them and this emotional, something that would be like sort of just emotionally powerful, emotionally compelling. And that's exactly the kind of actress that she is. You know, you watch her and she just, she radiates so much um, in her performances. And so so we were so lucky to have her. And then and then once she came on, she brought a lot of, um, you know, her ideas and her passion for the role. By you, um, I think is you know, an actor by the time that they're, you know, in the, seventh or eighth episode it's you know they they really have to own it they have to own that role and certainly like coming back to the second season she she came in with a lot of very um strong ideas and a lot of things that she wanted to do for the character and and took uh, took ownership of it in a really great way so um so not only did she bring a lot of complexity but she brought a lot of um you know creative juices to it too yeah, well, she's amazing. I'm, like, totally in love with her, <laughs> so it's great. She's great. Um, you know, Academy Award winner, so... <laughs> yeah, wow, no, she's so great in the role. It's amazing. Like, as a girl, I'm just looking up to her going, wow, amazing, that's what I want. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we saw a very confused Molly back in Season 1, trying to make sense of how she got pregnant. Uh, what was going on and um, what was going on around her, et cetera, um taking the viewers along with the ride. What kind of Molly will we see in season two? Uh, because she knows about her half-alien son being out in the world. Uh, does the rest of the world know about the alien invasion Molly stopped, or is everything being kept under wraps for now? Uh, well, I'm, I don't want to tell you too much about it, because you know, so much of it is involves the story, but I can tell you that, that we're going to see a very different Molly this season. Um, and as you can guess, you know, like by the end of the first season, she had been through... A lot, <laughs> like in a very short period of time. So she, had, you know, she'd been through the whole thing of, uh, you know, going to space and coming back, and the the conspiracy around the pregnancy, you know, all the um the the sort of you know rocky relationship with, um you know with John and coming back and being kind of disconnected from Ethan who had who had been meant to be their son, you know, meant to he brought was brought into home to be, uh you know to be part of the family, and so. Um, and then by the end of it, she has to go back up to space. She has this terrifying uh, experience back on the Seraphim at the end. Uh, and, and then she comes home, and, and Ethan is, uh, you know, like uh, Ethan has had this sort of transcendence, you know, from his body to somewhere else. And then also her her half-human, half-alien son is, is kind of on the loose. So, like, by the end of it, she's been through a lot, and she's lost a lot. You know, <laughs> And so... Um. She, um, so I think we're going to see a Molly who's, you know, maybe her her uh, mental state is kind of in question. You know, like she's, you know, her stability is kind of in question. She's had a lot taken from her, and and um, and so she's. She, I think there's a drive to her coming back where um, there's not a lot left for her to lose, and so, you know, and so and then and then she thinks that maybe she's, you know, she's while up in space on the Seraphim that she stopped the threat, but she's going to learn that 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 isn't the case. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I think a character that doesn't have a lot to lose is always an interesting thing to play with. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what kind of threat will Molly's alien son pose? Like, judging from season one, the season one final, we also know that uh, the people who went after Ethan, uh, namely Odin, aren't done yet. Um, will these two things intersect? Well, we I, we're not really at this point planning on going back to the Odin storyline just yet. You know, okay. it, it 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 um it's one of those things that I think you know it was really interesting as a way to explore and and he, that it's sort of alive, you know, for it to uh, for it to come back into play. But we don't we don't have a plan for him just yet because there's so much else for the characters, like the sort of immediate things for them to deal with. Um, and so um, and coming after that, and I have the feeling that Odin kind of went underground somewhere like after uh, after that failed attempt he's probably lay low for a bit um, but in terms of, of Molly and the you know the threat we it if you you know if you saw season one you saw this thing that was sort of highly adaptive and it was growing very quickly and it um, and it really was just out trying to survive you know it was it was this thing that was just really trying to um, uh, trying to live like the rest of us, you know, as per the title of the show. It's a show that is about survival, and it's about, you know, the survival of all these species, about human beings, and about this this new extraterrestrial species, and and uh, humanics, and this new artificial intelligence. You know, we're all we're all sort of in this in this fight for survival now, and so uh, so I think it's safe to say that that you know, like her alien son is not going to. to to stop trying to survive, and that that's going to have a ripple effects and consequences uh, uh, for humans. And and you know, Molly's going to feel a certain responsibility for having having brought that here. So. Yeah. Wow. Um. In the season one final, Ethan seemed to be everywhere. Will he follow his program to act like a human, or will uh, other parts of his AI personality come to surface? Well, I think that's always going to be the interesting thing about Ethan is that there's always going to be that push and pull of him to um, between his human side and his AI side, and and um, you know just as Molly's son has her has this you know human side and its alien nature, its extraterrestrial nature, you know Ethan is always going to be battling the the sense of um, you know who am I really? Like I know I'm not human. I know I'm not flesh and blood. I know that I'm 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 an other still in a sense, um, and so I think there's always going to be kind of a battle with him, and that's always in you know a lot of my favorite science fiction. That is always the the the, the prism to explore all those big questions about what does it mean to be human? What is it you know what is it really? Is it your uh, is it your that you're a collection of memories and experiences? You know, or is there something more? Is there something like uh, divine or supernatural about it? And, and um, and so I think we're going to see this season. We're going to see that play out in a in a in a bigger way with Ethan and the sort of artificial intelligence in general, um, uh, you know, in humanics. And so he, um, but yeah, that will always be his struggle, I think. And because he had that, um, because John, his his dad, his creator, had such a drive to give him the human experience, he's always going to be a little closer to us than he's going to be to machines. But that doesn't mean that he isn't going to eventually relate to machines and see them as, uh, you know, allies or family. God, I know that's what I'm terrified of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so mm -hmm. after extends season two renewal, uh, there was a lot of news about uh, somewhat revamping the show and bringing in new characters and letting go of old ones. Um, so I want to like talk about the changes. Uh, sure. Julie, played by the amazing Grace Scummer, is returning for season two. Uh, we didn't see her interact with Molly much previously, which I hope changes in the upcoming season. Will her storyline be more Ethan centric, or will the alien cri crisis always also cross her path? Um, you know, she's definitely going to have a bit more interaction with Molly. There's going to be a little. There are going to be some things that kind of drive them together. Um, you know their person, you know their personal lives, kind of crossing uh, and driving together. But she's going to have a bit of a um, an elevated role in humanics itself this season. She's going to be, you know, Julie was you know such a, a partner in it to John and in the creation of Ethan, and uh, and so this season she's going to have a lot more responsibility. She's going to have to step up her game quite a bit, and 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 she's going to be put in a lot of tough positions in, in terms of like the future of where this is going, um, and it's very Ethan centric. 
uh, in a way. And, and um, what was the last part of the question? What was the uh, oh is oh in the, in terms of like the broader the sort of story? With, yeah, yeah, and and I think that ultimately that that where we're headed, um, that story will cross our path as well. You know, we we did this thing in the first season where, and I and I to me it was one of the things we were able to do successfully was finally like bring what seems like two divergent storylines together into a, yeah. you know, like this artificial intelligence and then this is extraterrestrial life and, and, and really put them as two speeding trains on a track that are, you know, head right towards each other. And, and um, so I think in terms of all those stories, we'll always sort of be coming back and are weaving and converging and pinballing off each other. And, and uh, so Julie was definitely going to have a, a, a taste of that this season. Awesome. Exciting. Um, so you've got the talented David Morrissey joining the cast. Uh, what can you tell yes. us about his character, General Tobias Shepard, and his past with Molly? Yes. So we, um, he, he, he awesome. he's an awesome actor. Uh, I, I love him. I haven't seen a ton of Walking Dead, but he's so great on that, too. Um, we're so we're lucky to have him. He's, um, his character, Tobias Shepard, so we're, we're talking about a world here where um, you know, a bit in the, a bit in our future that there's this global security commission, which is like a, a division of say like Homeland security and, and in charge of keeping an eye out on, uh, you know, threats, things that could cause like mass extinction, you know, like extinction level events. So they would be looking out for, you know, pandemics, asteroids, uh, large scale you know, terrorism, things like that, anything that could cause like an extinction level event. And, and, um, and so he's a guy that comes from that world. And now, um, and he's got a bit of a past, you know, he and Molly, they, they, they knew each other and, and, and he knew John as well. And so, so there's a complicated, uh, personal relationship that comes along with his, with his new duties. And, um, so we're going to get to see that play out in a really interesting way throughout, throughout the course of the season. Um, how his, you know, how his job conflicts with his, with his feelings for them as people and, and, and for her as a, as a person. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of interesting kind of juicy stuff and he's, you know, he's a guy who, ha who has a, who has a big responsibility. He, you know, he has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Well, under pressure then. So. <laughs> a lot of pressure. <laughs> Just a few billion lives were depending on you. So we'll see a lot of um, David Morrissey along with Halle Berry together in scenes and stuff. Yeah, there's they got they got a lot together. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so Jeffrey Dean Morgan will also be joining the show, playing the roguish J J D Richer, Richter. Uh, Richter. Yeah. Uh, what a, kind of character a, dynamics to uh, can we look forward to when it comes to Richter, General Tobias, and Molly? Will uh, the three share some screen space? Uh, well, I can tell you, yeah, I can tell you about you know Richter a little bit, JD. Oh yeah. He, um, his character, he's kind of our cop of the future, and we're we're talking about a world where um, police work has been kind of um, transitioned out of like what we know it is today, and into more of something like Uber. Uh, you know, we're talking like the you know Uber policing, which is like uh, they're independent, they operate independently, they get a you know an alert on their phone that says. Uh, you know, this crime has taken place. You have uh, here's the amount that comes for solving it. You have 20 seconds to decline or accept. You know that kind of thing. And so, so they sort of you know to save on the overhead, to save on the buildings and the health insurance and all that stuff that they've distilled policing into this you know independent kind of thing. And so, so Richter is a guy like that. He has great skills and uh, and a, and a long history of um, uh, you know a, a history of being. You know, a guy, he's just kind of our everyman. He's a guy, I, mean, I think a lot of us felt that the show last season, you know, it was like, you know, astronauts and pioneering roboticists and, uh, like, uh, billionaire Japanese, uh, you know, geniuses and, and things like that. And so there wasn't really, like, an everyman. There wasn't really anybody to go, like, what the hell are you talking about, the aliens, you know? So you know, it kind of lacked that. And so this year... JD kind of fulfills that function for the audience too. You know, as, as the audience goes on the long the ride, he's the guy who's saying, "Wait a second, you wait, you're telling me there's you know aliens," uh, and so he's it's a lot of fun. And so he's also a guy, then that kind of puts him at odds with Molly because um, at cross purposes a little bit with Molly because she's you know sort of on this mission. She's had all this experience and all this knowledge, and he's you know he's a bit of a skeptic. He's going to be a bit of a, a you know, a guy who's he, he has a job where ninety nine percent of the people he comes across lie to him, <laughs> yeah. and so uh, it's so it's going to be a big That's sort of journey for him. And then in, in a, 
points, he's going to cross paths with uh, with the general as well. So oh, that will all be interesting. So and, he uh, kind as of our, as our other executive producer Liz say uh, would say, sparks will fly. Ooh, exciting! Uh, yeah. So he's kind of the audience surrogate in order to like explain yeah. all the sci-fi mumbo jumbo stuff. Absolutely, yeah, and and kind of the fun of it too. You know, like the show last year was sort of weighty and like, uh, you know, all those kind of big things of like the pregnancy and having the baby taken from. Those are all kind of so serious and so, um, you know, it's not a lot of like opportunity for levity. But then if you bring a character in like that, he can he can really kind of speak the speak the audience's thoughts, and there's a real opportunity for a kind of gallows humor in that. Oh, and, so he's that uh, is he a bit like genre savvy or? Um, you know, I, I, you know, in terms of like the character, like, yeah. like, would the character know that that yeah. stuff? Not necessarily. He's oh, he's more okay. kind of like uh, in for the good time with the ladies and the beer drinking oh, and nice. you know, yeah, the, the, kind of the roguish, yeah. But the, okay. thing, but the person you're talking about would be really interesting in this world too, which is like, uh, yeah. you know, somebody who's like a conspiracy theorist or somebody who's seen it all and who would be like, no, absolutely, I believe you yeah. that they're aliens. Yeah. <laughs> so of course there are aliens. Yeah, they, they host a podcast about it. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a question from Fareed's mom. So, yay. Uh, Hit me. Uh, I don't know how much say you guys have when it comes to Molly's wardrobe, uh, but what was up with her wearing wedges all the time? During the even during the action sequences, she even tried to climb through an elevator shaft during one of the episodes while wearing them. Will the uh, wedges still be? Will be? Will the wedges be extant during this season? Ah, uh, the wedges. <laughs> <laughs> you think you've heard uh, a lot about the wedges. <laughs> I've heard a lot about the wedges. Yeah. Um, I think I could say that the wedges will be retired uh, for the most part. I, I haven't seen any yet. Um, but you know, yes, exactly. Um, it's kind of one of those things where you're... You, because that she was in one outfit for a few days and spanning a few episodes. So it got increasingly... Um, more uh, more unrealistic as it went on because she was all of a sudden putting these sort of crazy situations, but um, we didn't want to like there, we didn't want to have a scene where she like stops and steals somebody's shoes you know, or something like that to do. So we were kind of committed to them for a yeah, while. Yeah. And then I mean I have to say the elevators the whole elevator thing was uh, that's on me because that was my episode I wrote it. But I will say like I kind of justified it to myself at the time saying hey you know what those wedges give her just that extra inch. Of you know, inch and a half of of uh, leverage to get up that elevator shaft. So, so maybe maybe without the wedges, she'd have been too short to climb up that elevator. So. Yeah, you never know, right? But that's tell your mom that's a great question, and tell her she is not the first person to have asked me about that. <laughs> I'm really excited that she's not the first person to have asked that. <laughs> I feel like everyone's worried about the lady. She's like, you can't do that in those shoes. <laughs> right. No. So yeah. So yeah. Well, it's always kind of like that's, a, you know, it's almost such a classic like horror kind of trope too of like yeah. running away from yeah. somebody in high heels, kind of thing. And yeah. Well, it I suppose like the up. wedges are better than stilettos. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. I think that's all we've got for questions wise. Um, is there anything else you can tell us about season two? Um, you know, I can tell you, like, in terms of just the the, the sort of angle on season two, it's yeah. you know coming in like you know a lot of my favorite shows. I'm a big I'm a big Doctor Who fan, and you yeah. know Doctor Who they do that reboot every night. You too. Yeah, it's kind of geeky. Yeah, it has to be. Um, but it's, you know, they do they do a reboot, and it, and the show comes in with a di a different tone, and new cast members, and and more and self contained stories that build on the last. And, and I think that's really what we're trying to do here. You know, we weren't sure at the end of last season if we were going to come back. So so we you know all through season one we were kind of building to something that would hopefully feel like a satisfying ending. Yeah. Uh, you know, if people tuned in for all thirteen episodes, that they wouldn't feel like you know so much left hanging. And I feel like what we're, what we're doing with this is. You know, for anybody who was a fan of the first season, they could, they're going to be able to jump right in, and, and there's going to be a lot that's going to they're going to see the evolution of the series. And then for new people, new people could jump right in and 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 pick right up. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun this year, and I think it's a um, we've got a, a great cast, and and uh, you know we have new showrunners, and they're and uh, and they're great people and really smart and fun to work with, and uh, and they've brought a really um, 
the you know the uh, a sense of play to the you know to the voice of it too. The the but the the voices have kind of merged, and so I, don't know, I think for anybody that's tuning in, that it, it, it'll be a little bit different show, but hopefully it'll be a lot more of what they loved and and uh, and uh, an evolution of that. Oh wow! It sounds. I'm pretty pretty hyped for it now. I'm not gonna lie. All right. Great. Well, well, thank you so much, and thanks thank for watching. You, thanks, for, thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. I appre I appreciate you guys uh, watching and tuning in. So thank you very much. Oh, no, we're gonna we're gonna keep reviewing. Well, Farid is he's our extant guy. Thank you, Farid. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for talking to us.